Hey, it's Glassboxed here and welcome to my Git video tutorial series. A number of you guys have been asking me to do videos on Git and after much time I really considered it and I think it's a great idea. So let me introduce you to my brand new video series for Git. We're going to break up these videos into several different topics and I'm going to try my best to discuss each topic in as much detail as I can. So naturally, this first video, we are going to cover installation and setup of Git. So before I even start installing Git, let me talk about Git in general. Let me just talk about what it is and what it does. So the assumption is, because a lot of you guys have been asking me, I think most of you know what Git is. But for those who don't, I'll explain it in a simple way. Git is basically a program that allows you to maintain control over changes to any given file. It allows you to save the changes of a given file in what you can call states or snapshots. So for example, let's just say we have a file, doesn't matter what that file is, it could be anything. It could be an image, it could be a text file, absolutely anything. You save it. Once you save that file, it is of a certain state. Going forward, let's say you save that state and let's just call that state A for now. Now, let's just say that you make more changes and you save that file again, we can call that state B. Let's say that going forward you make a further number of changes resulting in state C. Git allows you to go back to state A from state C, it allows you to go back to state B from state C and so on. It is essentially a tool that allows you to jump between multiple states if you want to. The bottom line is it is a program that allows you to change what point in time you want to go for a given file. Now we've talked about it from a given file perspective. Git allows you to do that same thing for, but for files on larger scales i.e. let's just say projects. For example, let's just say you have a project uh, a Java project which contains, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, an arbitrary number of classes and tests and you make changes over time. At one point maybe you introduce a bug and you quickly want to just revert to a previous state. All you do is you get a previous snapshot of your code base in total. You pull it out and then you have code that was in a state that was working and you still have your changes, you can go back to it. Now this can sound quite confusing now. I promise this is going to become very clear as we actually start to use Git going forward. So that was me just trying to explain in general what Git allows you to do. And I won't talk about the advantages just now because I think it's going to introduce more confusion. Instead, let's actually start installing Git and let's just try and get it set up. So my machine here is a, a Windows OS system. It really doesn't matter what kind of machine you use. The underlying OS on the machine absolutely makes no difference whatsoever. But if it helps, this current machine does not have any version of Git installed at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and install it. So to install it, all you do is go to whichever search engine you use, type in download Git. And I am going to click on this, Git Downloads. And I'm going to go ahead and download the Windows version. And I'm going to download the Git 32-bit version. So while that's downloading, if you have the 64-bit version of your OS, go ahead and download that version instead. Why? Because it's going to be a little bit more faster. Great, so it looks like it's finished downloading. So we're just gonna go ahead, go to the installation folder, and all we're going to do is run the installer. Say run, yes. Right, so when we see this welcome to get setups wizard, we're just going to hit next. Uh, yep, make sure you read all of this because I've already installed it once. I'm just gonna hit next. Uh, this path is good enough although it's probably important you remember where you install it. Next. 
and we want to install both git bash and git gui gui might come in handy going forward but git bash we will certainly need git bash is going to look very similar to the windows console uh, we'll have a look at that in a second next uh, yep next so here go ahead and only select the first option don't select the other two uh, if you want to you can all it's going to do is allow you to install or rather use git as part of your windows command line console instead of git bash uh, but i think it's safer if we just use git bash only because if you use the other two then they will start kind of messing around with your path systems and you probably don't want to do that just in case so just use git bash from git bash only next uh yep that's fine all that is saying is what kind of style or syntax of text we will be using for git bash in our case we'll be using unix style lines um, we'll go over stuff like that as well next uh, yep uh, I just leave that unchecked next great so it looks like it's uh, installed um, if you want to see the release notes go ahead I really don't personally want to so just say finish okay so we've done the installation so now what we're going to do is fire up git bash so to fire up git bash just go to your start menu and just go to all programs find git and just say git bash great so i'm just going to go ahead and slightly change the properties of this so that we can see the text a bit better so i'm going to go right click and oops actually right click in the console and go options maybe and i'll change the text to maybe uh, 20 hit apply and okay okay so that looks good to me great so now that we've changed the text size a bit so that we can see a bit clearer what we're going to do is just to make sure that we've actually installed git i'm going to go ahead and type in git so if you want to use any git commands the first thing you have to type in is git followed by any options or arguments in this case I'm just going to say dash dash version and if I now hit enter this now gives me the version of git that is currently installed on the machine so this is good news this means that we've actually installed git successfully and there were no issues whatsoever so if you're seeing this then congratulations you've just installed git now there are a couple of things we should do or rather i'd like to do just to kind of finish off the git installation part as well as the git setup part so we've installed git that's great the next thing we want to do is to just quickly change the username and the email address that we use for git so in this case before we do that let's have a look at the config settings for git currently so to do that if we say git space config space list So as we can see here, our username and email address has not been set up yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to say git config dash dash global. And I'm going to say user dot name. And then I am going to pass in a name. So in this case, I'm just going to say class boxed and close it with a quotation mark. So before I hit enter, what does this actually mean? So what this means is I'm going to use git config to invoke a method called config in this case. And what I want to do is set the username of this particular git user and it's a global type variable. Now global type variable is actually very misleading. What it means is I am going to set something globally. The reason why global is misleading is because anyone might assume global means uh, you know everything everyone everywhere in this case global is actually referring to the current git user so don't be kind of misled by reading into this too much all this is saying is i want to use git to configure the global username to glassbox and hit enter great so the next thing I want to do is set my email address, which in this case is git 
config global user dot email and I'm just going to set it to um, class box at test.com and set that so here I've done exactly the same thing only this time I'm set the username instead and I'm now going to run git config list again oops and now as you can see it's set the username as well as the email address so like I said as part of the installation git uses uh, unix style commands or rather linux style commands if you're not familiar with linux style i'll go over that as of when i run the commands so that's it for this video folks in this video we've covered how to install git and how to set up both the username as well as the user email address in the next video we will start looking at how to use git as part of an mt project so until then ciao Hi guys, it's Glassboxed here and I really appreciate you guys watching my video and if you've liked it then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also follow me on Twitter and Google, links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.